Chapter 1741, Grudge Against Her Family, Sure, But Not Now We Can Go There When There Is A Good Time, Said Jing Yun Yao, Although With Shang Wen Yang's Help, The Jing Family Wouldn't Be Able To Hurt Them, They Still Wanted To Take Revenge On Their Own. When Will There Be A Good Time? Asked Shang Wen Yang In A Hurry. He Always Wanted To Go To The Cultivation World. If Gunning And Leng Shouting Could Enter It, He Would Have Asked Them To Take Him There. Well, To Be Honest With You, I have a long-standing grudge against my family, so I'll directly take revenge when I go back there, Master Shang Wen, I know you're at a very high level, and the Jing family won't be able to hurt us with your help, but we want to take revenge on our own. Cho Ting just became a cultivator, although he's talented, his level is still low, so I plan to wait till Cho Ting has reached a high level, said Jing Yun Yao, although Jing Yun Yao hoped that Leng Cho Ting could reach above the Yuan Ying period, she knew it was very difficult, and it would take a long time. After all, many talented cultivators had spent dozens of years on it. Even though Leng Shouting was more talented than other people, it could still take him years to reach a very high level. They might not be able to wait for such a long time, because their enemies might find them first. Anyway, no one knew what would happen in the future. Actually, if they avoided their enemies on purpose and hid themselves in Kunlun Mountain, it was possible that no one could find them. However, it was impossible for them to hide themselves like that, because Leng Shouting had his work to do. If he gave up his job to avoid other cultivators, it would be irresponsible. Shang Wen Yang nodded after hearing the reason, and had no intention to force them to take him there. As for Jing Yun Yao's grudge against the Jing family, he didn't ask about it either, because it was her own family affair. He was curious about many things but he knew what he could ask and what he shouldn't. Therefore, in order to change the topic, Shang Wen Yang complained about Leng Shouting. He's been too busy these days, and he doesn't have much time for cultivation. Although he understood that Leng Shouting had a very important job, he was still a little dissatisfied. As Leng Shouting's master, he wanted him to be the best. If Leng Shouting could have an extraordinary achievement, it also proved his ability as his master. Unfortunately, Leng Shouting was too busy to come back, and he sometimes wondered whether Leng Shouting already forgot him. Only Gunning often called him and cared about him. He even had a feeling that Gunning was his disciple. In fact, Leng Shouting also called him, but not as often as Gunning. Leng Shouting served in the army after all, and there were strict rules. Thinking of Gunning, Shang Wen Yang remembered that she also wanted to become a cultivator. If she succeeded, he would spare no effort to help her with her cultivation whether she wanted him to be her master or not. She was his disciple's further wife after all, and wasn't an outsider. In addition, he had a very good impression of Gunning. Our team has field training the day after tomorrow. It'll last about three to five days. After training, if there are no unexpected tasks, I can rest for a week, then come back and concentrate on cultivation, Leng Shouting said. Although he didn't forget his cultivation in his daily life, it was different when Shang Wen Yang taught him face to face. He made slow progress when he practiced alone, but he could make much quicker progress with Shang Wen Yang's help. If it's possible, we can go back to the Kunlun sect's place together. There is thick magical power in the universe tower and it's very helpful for your cultivation. As for how much you can benefit from it, it depends on your talent, said Shang Wen Yang. Universe Tower? Hearing that, Jing Yun Yao was surprised. Is it still the same? The Universe Tower was the treasure of the Kunlun sect, a holy place for cultivation, because of the thick magical power inside and the actual practice of clearance illusions. Clearance illusions meant that there would be illusionary cultivators fighting against you. If you defeated this cultivator, you could pass the level, which was a proof of your ability. If you failed, you wouldn't be able to go up to the upper level. When you were hit in the illusions, the pain was real, but you wouldn't really be hurt. The Kunlun sect was able to be the leading orthodox sect in the Wulin that year and became the sect with the most masters not only because the Kunlun sect was located in the holy land of magical power, which was of great benefit to cultivation, but also because of the universe tower, which was regarded as the best place for cultivation. Many people wanted to go inside to cultivate that year, but only disciples of the Kunlun sect were allowed to enter the tower. Even the disciples of the Kunlun sect could only go in at the specified time, and couldn't enter it as they like. After all, there were over a thousand disciples in the Kunlun sect, 
while only 10 people could be allowed to enter the universe tower at a time. Even if the universe tower was empty, it was forbidden to sneak inside to cultivate, because there were formations. No matter who wanted to go inside, he or she had to be led by the tower guard. If anyone insisted on breaking in, he or she wouldn't even be able to open the door, just like what happened when Gunning and Leng Shouting had tried at that time. As a result, even though outsiders were jealous, they could do nothing about it. Many people were attracted by the magical power and the universe tower and wanted to join the Kunlun sect, but the Kunlun sect had a very high standard for its disciples. Not everyone would be accepted. If anyone could be easily accepted, the Kunlun sect would have tens of thousands instead of only over a thousand disciples. Yeah, it hasn't changed much, said Shang Wen Yang. Jing Yan Yao hesitated for a while, then asked, Master Shang Wen? Can I go with you? Although it wasn't very likely, because she wasn't a disciple of the Kunlun sect and outsiders weren't allowed to go in there according to the rules set by the Kunlun sect, she was eager to improve her cultivation in order to take revenge earlier. Of course, the Kunlun sect is different now, and there is no need for us to obey the old rules, said Shang Wen Yang. There were indeed many rules in the old time, but everything changed now, so they didn't need to obey them nowadays. However, Shang Wen Yang still wouldn't allow strangers to go there. Thanks. Jing Yan Yao beamed when Shang Wen Yang agreed. After that, they casually chatted with each other. When it was almost 6 p.m., Lao Jiang prepared dinner which they enjoyed together. After having dinner, they took a rest for a while, and left at 8 p.m. Because Gunning had something else to deal with tonight, she didn't go back with Leng Shouting and Jing Yan Yao. Instead, they got in their own cars and left separately. Chapter 1742, How to Give Up the Obsession Anyway, Gunning promised Leng Shouting that she would go back to Mountain River Garden for the night. Although they couldn't sleep in the same room because of Jing Yun Yao, Leng Shouting would still feel happy when they were under the same roof. Because Chu Pei Hun and Yamixi didn't need Gunning to take them to anywhere else for fun, Gunning had more free time. Since Gunning planned to see Tang Bingsen, she had to disguise herself as Tang Aining first, but it was still early. It was nearly 9 p.m., so there would still be many people in the hospital. She wanted to go there when there were fewer people, because it would be more convenient for her to take action. Before that, she would deal with something else first without the disguise. Gunning drove the car toward a remote place. She was going to release the ghost she encountered in the haunted house, and ask it why it was in there. Since she ran into the ghost, it had to disappear. It would be better if the ghost was willing to give up its obsession and disappear by itself to be reincarnated. However, if it refused to leave this world, Gunning could only let the Flood Dragon eat it and make it impossible to be reincarnated. Today, she decided to deal with the ghost, because it occupied space in her telepathic eye space. There was also a monster fox in her telepathic eye space. If it agreed to follow her orders, she wouldn't mind taking it as her pet. It might be her helper in the future. If it refused, she could only kill it too. Gunning went to a remote place, got out of the car and released the male ghost that she had encountered in the haunted house. When the male ghost was released, it was scared when it saw that it wasn't in the haunted house, but a strange place. At the same time, it also felt the air of a girl who was born in a lunar year. It was excited and turned to look at Gunning. It was so excited that it ignored the fact that it suddenly appeared in a strange place, but it was obviously surprised when it saw Gunning's face. She was still the girl who was born in a lunar year, but was in different clothes. Besides, it still failed to figure out where it was right now. Something must have happened which it didn't know about. Can you see me? asked the male ghost subconsciously, it really felt that Gunning's look was on its body, but it was quite incredible. Yes, said Gunning. Hearing the answer, the male ghost looked astonished, and it was still difficult for it to believe it. Why can you see me? Because I'm not an ordinary mortal, said Gunning. Knowing that, the male ghost frowned and asked, then what kind of mortal you are? I don't think it's necessary to explain that, said Gunning. The male ghost stopped asking about that and began to ask about something else. Why am I here? This is not the place I used to be. I brought you here, said Gunning. You brought me here? The male ghost couldn't believe its ears. How? Why did I feel nothing? It's a secret, 
said Ganing. She didn't bother to elaborate on that. Then why did you bring me here? asked the male ghost. All of a sudden, Ganing felt this male ghost was different from all the other ghosts she had met before. Although it looked scary, its expressions and way of talking made Ganing feel amused. Other ghosts showed strong hatred, while this male ghost only looked surprised and amazed. In addition to that, it stayed calm most of the time. Because you wanted to absorb my energy, I have to solve this problem, said Ganing. How did you know? The male ghost was shocked. However, when they talked about Ganing's energy, it looked at Ganing with its eyes full of greed, but it did nothing for the time being. Ganing wasn't mad at its greed. I told you that I'm not an ordinary mortal, so I naturally know about it. All the monsters and ghosts like you want magical power and the energy of girls who were born in a lunar year for cultivation, said Ganing. She stayed patient, facing the male ghost's endless questions because she thought it was funny. You're right, since you know I want to absorb your energy, why don't you escape? Why do you still show up in front of me? asked the male ghost. It didn't understand why Ganing did that. It knew that Ganing wasn't afraid of it, but it wanted to know the real reason why Ganing didn't run away from it. I'm not scared of you. You don't even know how you came here, which means that I'm better and stronger than you said Ganing. She actually wasn't laughing at it. Hearing that, the male ghost was struck dumb for a second. Since this girl was able to bring it here without it knowing about it, it meant that she was stronger than it. In that case, the male ghost became afraid of Ganing. What do you want to do? asked the male ghost. It understood that Ganing wouldn't let it go easily. What do you think? You just wanted to kill me, said Ganing with a meaningful smile. Do you want to kill me? asked the male ghost. However, the second it said that, it regretted it. Right, to kill you, said Ganing, and showed a look which said that she thought the male ghost was very smart. The male ghost subconsciously moved backwards a few steps, and even wanted to escape now. It was the weakest ghost Ganing had ever seen. Maybe it wasn't a very evil ghost. Ganing could also feel that it didn't have strong hatred. You better not have the idea of running away, because you won't be able to do that. Ganing warned it. The male ghost was surprised, because it realized that Ganing wasn't joking. It limited its desire to run away and asked, how will you destroy me? It depends on you. Can you give up your obsession and choose to be reincarnated on your own? Or do you want me to ruin your soul so that you'll never be reincarnated? Said Ganing with a serious expression, which made the male ghost feel stressed. Although this male ghost didn't look very evil, it was still a ghost and shouldn't exist in the mortal's world. Obsession? How can I give up my obsession? Asked the male ghost and it sounded upset. It seemed that it was still reluctant to do that. However, in actuality, if it was possible it would have given up the obsession earlier on. Is there anything you always wanted to do but couldn't do? I'm willing to help you, said Ganing. Really? The male ghost's eyes lit up at once but it looked upset again the next second. Can you? Chapter 1743, An Immortal Fox Although this girl in front of it was indeed different from other mortals, it didn't think that she had the ability to help it. I'm not sure whether I can help you or not, because I don't know what you've been through yet. If you don't tell me, how can I know whether I can help you? Said Ganing. She really wanted to roll her eyes at it, but she controlled herself. Hearing that, the male ghost agreed. It hesitated for a second, then told Ganing the story. The reason why I still have obsessions is that when I died, the token of love my wife gave me was taken away by another person. Because I was unwilling to accept it, I became a ghost. Afterwards, I've been following the person who took my token. However, as a ghost, I can't touch mortals at all. Therefore, even if I could see the token in the hands of another man, I couldn't take it back. That person's grave is under the haunted house, so I stayed there and didn't want to leave. Although it wasn't sure whether Ganing could help it, it hoped that she could because it didn't want to miss this great chance. So your current obsession is to get that token, Ganing said. It wasn't a question, because she was very sure about the answer. Because it was a ghost, it couldn't touch the token. However, the only thing it wanted to do now was to touch the token. Right? said the male ghost. I'm afraid I can't help you with it for the time being, but I have a very skilled master. He might be helpful, said Ganing. She told the truth. She indeed couldn't help the male ghost with that, 
so she could only turn to Shang Wenyang for help. Knowing that, the male ghost was disappointed. It knew that Gunning might not have the ability to help it. Anyway, since she said that she had a very skilled master and her master might be helpful, it had hope again. Even though it wasn't very likely to happen, it badly wanted to get the token back. As a result, the male ghost agreed. Great. Well, I need to keep you in my space right now, and I'll let you out after I have the answer from my master. If you dare to fight back, I won't waste time helping you and I'll directly ruin you, said Gunning. She was obviously threatening it. The male ghost hesitated for a second, then said, sure. Even though it doubted whether Gunning would really let it out again after keeping it in her space, it still agreed. After that, Gunning walked to the male ghost. She reached her hand to it, and the male ghost was instinctively scared by her, but it didn't resist at all. It was curious about how Gunning put it into her space, but it knew that Gunning wouldn't tell it, so it didn't bother to ask her. The second Gunning touched the male ghost, it felt like its soul was pulled out and it lost consciousness the next second. After that, Gunning let out the male ghost she ran into at the construction site. She planned to meet Shang Wen Yang tomorrow. Although this male ghost had been covered in magical power in Gunning's telepathic ice space, it only stayed there for a few days. Besides, it was filled with strong hatred, so it still looked evil at this time. What was worse, this male ghost was locked into the space by Gunning, so it hated Gunning very much. Once it was released, it glared at Gunning as if it wanted to kill her. It indeed wanted to kill Gunning, but it also understood that it was no match for her. Therefore, it tried to escape the second it was released. It could only run away and come back to take revenge after making progress in cultivation. The male ghost moved fast and it flew far away from Gunning in the blink of an eye. It was impossible for Gunning to catch it, so she let the flood dragon out at once. Ruin it right now. Gunning gave an order and the flood dragon rushed to the male ghost without delay. The male ghost moved faster than Gunning, but it wasn't comparable to the flood dragon, and the flood dragon soon caught it. The male ghost was terrified. However, before it could make any other moves, it felt that its soul was pulled away and the flood dragon swallowed it the next second. The flood dragon absorbed a lot of evil power along with much magical power, so its level increased a lot compared with when it first met Gunning. Nevertheless, it was still far from the heavenly tribulation. It didn't do cultivation every day after all, because it stayed in Gunning's telepathic eye space most of the time. When the flood dragon went back to Gunning, Gunning put it away into her telepathic eye space, then let the monster fox out. Once the monster fox was released, it had the same reaction as the male ghost and was amazed by the big change of the environment. In their eyes, it changed all of a sudden, because their consciousness stopped the second they were put into Gunning's telepathic eye space, and their memories also paused the second before that. Why am I here? The monster fox came out with its back facing Gunning, so it didn't see her right away. It was greatly surprised by the hot weather because it remembered that it was in a winter mountain before. As it said that, it smelled to human. It turned around at once and its sight fell on Gunning. Gunning looked familiar, but she was in different clothes which surprised the monster fox again. However, once it remembered that it was Gunning who had injured it, the monster fox became furious. It didn't have time to figure out why it suddenly came here and why Gunning changed her clothes, and began to attack Gunning. Gunning didn't rush to stop it, but she directly put it into the telepathic eye space once it touched her. After that, she let it out again, but caught its tail. Whatever was put into Gunning's telepathic eye space she could control its position. Therefore, when the monster fox regained its consciousness, it found that its tail was caught by Gunning. It was shocked and confused at the same time, but became angrier. It struggled, trying to get rid of Gunning, but failed. Damn you, stupid human! The monster fox growled and snapped at Gunning, let me go. I'm an immortal fox. Why should I let you go since you want to hurt me? Gunning calmly asked, hearing that. The monster fox was astonished and couldn't believe its ears. How is it possible that you can understand my language? Although it said something, it didn't expect Gunning to understand it, because they were different species. Unexpectedly, Gunning could understand it. Why wouldn't I understand your language? Gunning made fun of it. Chapter 1744, I can help you become immortal, you. 
The monster fox was too shocked to say anything now. It couldn't believe that immortal could understand its language, because it was quite incredible. All right, let's get down to business now, said Gunning. She didn't want to waste more time arguing with this monster fox. What business can we talk about? The monster fox said with disdain. About your life. Now, you have two choices. First, surrender and work for me, said Gunning. But the monster fox interrupted her before she could finish. No way. It's impossible that I'll surrender and work for you. Gunning's words annoyed the monster fox. The monster fox believed that it was superior to mortals, and it felt humiliated when Gunning wanted it to work for her. Well, if you're unwilling to do that, then you're left only one choice now. We can have a battle. If you win, you can do whatever you want to me, but you'll die if you lose said Gunning. I don't think you have the ability to defeat me, said the monster fox arrogantly. It took Gunning very lightly at this moment, and totally forgot the situation it was in now. Are you sure? Gunning sneered. She looked at the monster fox with mockery. Did you forget how you suddenly appeared here and how I caught your tail all of a sudden? You're still under my control now. Hearing that, the monster fox was shocked, then it realized that it suddenly showed up here because of this strange mortal and its tail was caught by her now. It couldn't get rid of her at all. In an instant, the monster fox gave up. However, it was the only existing monster fox, a mortal fox in its own eyes, in the fox group now, and it would be super humiliating if it surrendered itself to a mortal. The monster fox really took itself as an immortal fox, which proved that it ached to become immortal. However, if it didn't agree, it could die. Why did I suddenly appear here? asked the monster fox. It was most curious about that, because it happened too quickly before it could realize it. It's a secret, and I can't tell you, said Gunning. To be honest with you, a month has passed since you met me last time, and this is thousands of miles away from Kunlun Mountain. What? Hearing that, the monster fox rounded its eyes in shock. It was hard for it to believe, because it felt that it only happened within a second, but a month had already passed. Besides, this place was also thousands of miles away from Kunlun Mountain. It even thought that it could be a dream and Gunning was lying to its face. Although it found it was quite unbelievable, it knew that everything around had changed in a second. In addition, the weather was much warmer here, so it couldn't be around Kunlun Mountain. In that case, Gunning indeed had great ability to make it move to a far place in a second. The monster fox hesitated to surrender or to have the battle. It was unwilling to surrender but it was afraid of Gunning because of her mysterious ability. If you surrender to me, we'll be in the same group. Since we're in the same group, I won't treat you badly, and I can help you become immortal, said Gunning. She was tempting the monster fox, but it was also the truth, because she had endless magical power. Hearing that, the monster fox looked excited. It would be the best if it could become immortal, but it became suspicious the next second and questioned Gunning. How can you help me become immortal? Although you're different from other mortals, you're a mortal after all. I don't think you're able to break the rules in this world. I don't trust you. Facing the question, Gunning wasn't displeased, but smiled and asked, Haven't you noticed that your injury is healed? The monster fox then realized that its injury was indeed healed. Did she heal my injury? Thinking of that, the monster fox asked, Did you do that for me? Although it asked that question, it already had the answer, because there was no one else and it couldn't heal itself. However, it found it quite incredible, so it wanted to hear the answer from Gunning's mouth. Of course, said Gunning. Hearing Gunning's answer, the monster fox was astonished again, because it meant that she indeed had unbelievable abilities. Anyway, although Gunning healed its injury, it didn't mean that she was able to help it to become immortal, which was much more difficult after all. Therefore, it said. Even though you can heal my injury, it doesn't mean that you're able to help me become immortal. Gunning knew it as well. She could heal its injury, but might not be able to help it to become immortal. In fact, she told it that she had healed its injury simply to attract its attention. Gunning smiled and let the monster fox go. She wasn't afraid that it might escape, because the monster fox was already attracted to the condition she laid down and it wasn't very likely that it would run away. Moreover, even though it still had the idea to run away, 
it wouldn't be able to do that because of the flood dragon's existence. The monster fox subconsciously wanted to escape when it was released, but it didn't, because it was indeed attracted to the condition set by Gunning. Although it didn't believe that Gunning was able to help it to become immortal, it still had hope. After all, it really ached to become immortal, so it was unwilling to miss any chance. If Gunning was able to help it to become immortal, it wouldn't be a big deal when it surrendered itself to her for a while. It would be able to do anything it wanted once it became immortal. A fox was indeed very cunning, but it actually depended on Gunning whether it could leave then. The monster fox wouldn't become immortal before the flood dragon did, so it would be controlled by the flood dragon all the time. There was nowhere for it to escape. As for the flood dragon, Gunning believed that she had its loyalty. Even if the flood dragon was transformed into a real dragon, it wouldn't leave her, unless she was dead, which was what the flood dragon told her. Actually, Gunning already had her plan. She would send the flood dragon to protect Leng Shouting, because Leng Shouting had a Kian Kun bag now, he could put the flood dragon in it. She had talked about it with the flood dragon, but not with Leng Shouting yet. The flood dragon agreed. Gunning and Leng Shouting were a family after all, so it wouldn't make any difference who it stayed with. Chapter 1745 Agree to surrender. Leng Shouting would go to Kunlun Mountain in a few days, and he might enter the Universe Tower, so the Flood Dragon was quite excited about it. Although Leng Shouting couldn't understand the Flood Dragon's language, the Flood Dragon could understand him. Therefore, they could get along well with each other. Also, even though Leng Shouting couldn't understand it, Shang Wen Yang and Jing Yun Yao could. Gunning decided to tell Shang Wen Yang and Jing Yun Yao about it this time because they would find out sooner or later. As for her own safety, she would be fine as long as she didn't encounter cultivators at a very high level after sending the flood dragon to protect Leng Shouting. Even if she met strong monsters or ghosts, she could easily put them into her telepathic eye space once she touched them, so there was nothing to worry about. Besides, she planned to train the monster fox to work for her now. The monster fox would also be her helper. Although it was still very weak and was not even a match for her, there were some things it could do while she couldn't. Otherwise, there was no need for her to persuade the monster fox to work for her. If it was useless, she would directly kill it. Although the monster fox wasn't very willing to follow her, it might change over time, because it took time for them to build trust. Anyway. Gunning wouldn't force it to stay by her side. If the monster fox wanted to leave her after becoming immortal, she wouldn't stop it. However, the condition was that the monster fox didn't betray her or hurt her. If it dared to do that, she wouldn't hesitate to kill it. Moreover, she was working hard to become a cultivator, and she was determined to be strong and powerful so that she could protect herself properly on her own. The second Gunning reached out her hand, a few power crystals appeared in it. Because she had no intention to avoid the monster fox, it witnessed it with its own eyes. The monster fox was completely amazed. It believed that it must be magic for the power crystals to suddenly appear in Gunning's hand. However, Gunning was just a mortal. How could she have magic? The next second, it smelled the pure magical power from the crystals in Gunning's hand. Its eyes lit up at once and rushed towards Gunning without delay trying to grab them away from her. Although it didn't know what they were, they were the best stuff for it because they contained magical power, especially pure magical power. If it was able to get a large amount of pure magical power, its cultivation would be greatly improved in a short time. Although it had lived in Kunlun Mountain for years and the magical power there was of good quality, it wasn't very helpful for its cultivation, so it made slow progress. There was the purest magical power in the universe tower but unfortunately it couldn't move close to it. Once it was within 10 meters away from it, it felt great pressure and couldn't breathe normally. As a result, it could only keep a distance away from it. However, the moment the monster fox rushed to Gunning, Gunning put the magical power back into her telepathic ice space, then avoided the monster fox by slightly turning her body. The monster fox was mad, but didn't dare to vent its anger on Gunning. It had witnessed Gunning's abilities and realized that Gunning also had what it wanted most, so it had to control its temper in front of her. What is that? The monster fox asked Gunning. It's a kind of solidified magical power crystal. It's very pure. A single crystal might be of no use, 
but multiple crystals are of great help to cultivators. They are even more effective than the pills made by alchemists, Gunning said, and the monster fox was deeply attracted to it. Can you give me some? asked the monster fox. Why should I? You don't have any relationship with me. What can I get after giving them to you? said Gunning. Hearing that, the monster fox understood what Gunning wanted from it. Although it was still a little reluctant to do that, it still said after hesitating for a second, fine, I agree to surrender to you. As long as it surrendered to Gunning, it would be able to get the power crystals and become immortal one day. Great, but let's be candid here. If you dare to betray me, I won't hesitate to kill you, so you must be loyal to me. When you become immortal, it'll be the best if you're still willing to stay by my side. If not, I won't force you to stay said Gunning. It seemed to not benefit Gunning at all, and the monster fox was at the advantage all the time, but Gunning actually didn't think that way, because the monster fox was her slave before it became immortal. Gunning wouldn't deliberately torture the monster fox, but she needed its help in many situations. In fact, she needed the monster fox to do something for her a while later. She wasn't afraid that the monster fox would leave her after becoming immortal. She wouldn't force the monster fox to stay by her side after it became immortal, but it was quite difficult. Cultivation was time consuming and boring, and the monster fox wasn't a talented cultivator like Lang Shouting, so it would take years for it to achieve its goal even if it had Gunning's help. Besides, even if the monster fox could reach the highest level of its cultivation, it still might not be able to become immortal. In order to become immortal, it must survive the heavenly tribulation, which was the most difficult part. Once it failed, it would be ruined. Therefore, even if the monster fox reached the highest level of its cultivation, it probably wouldn't have the courage to accept the challenge of heavenly tribulation. Really? The monster fox was excited. It would be the best if Gunning wouldn't stop it from leaving after it became immortal. Of course, Gunnings said. Great, I promise that I'll be loyal to you, said the monster fox without hesitation this time. Are you serious about it? Asked Gunning again. Yes, I am, said the monster fox. It wouldn't do it, because it wasn't necessary. It wouldn't do it any good if it betrayed Gunning after all. Given the monster fox's current attitude, Gunning believed that it was serious, but she didn't know what would happen in the future. It was a cunning fox after all. Therefore, Gunning stayed alert for the time being. She stayed on the alert not just for the monster fox, but for everyone. She never trusted anyone at the very beginning. It also took the flood dragon a long time to win her trust. Very good. I have something else to tell you, but it's hard to make it clear within a short time. I'm busy now. So let's call it a day. Oh, I might need your help later, but I need to put you back into my space first. I'll let you out if I really need your help in a while, said Gunning. Chapter 1746. Not problems. How will you put me into your space? The monster fox was alert. What if Gunning wouldn't let it out after putting it into the space? Although it wasn't very likely, it was still worried. After all, one could never be too careful. Since we've reached the agreement, I definitely won't hurt you, said Gunning. Great. If so, the monster fox didn't bother to ask further about it. Afterwards, Gunning walked to the monster fox. She touched its head and it disappeared the next second and went into Gunning's telepathic high space. When everything was done, it was almost 11 p.m. Gunning was afraid that Jing Yan Ya might worry if she went back to Mountain River Garden so late, so she called Leng Shouting. She told him that she still had something to deal with tonight and didn't want to worry Jing Yan Ya if she went back too late, so she wouldn't go back tonight, and would meet them tomorrow. Because Gunning was still busy dealing with something so late, Leng Shouting asked her what she was busy with. He wasn't suspicious of Gunning but didn't want Gunning to be tired. Gunning didn't keep it secret from Leng Shouting, and told him that she had been busy dealing with the male ghost and the monster fox. They were well handled, and she was going to see Tang Bingson next. Leng Shouting was aware of Gunning's grudge against Tang Bingson, but all he knew was what Gunning had told him so he didn't know any details. Leng Shouting asked Gunning whether she needed his help. Gunning said that she didn't need his help, and Leng Shouting didn't insist. In fact, Jing Yun Ya wouldn't be worried even if Gunning came back late, so Leng Shouting still persuaded her to come back to Mountain River Garden tonight. Gunning thought for a while, 
then agreed. After having the call with Leng Shouting, Ganning got in the car and disguised herself as Tang Aining before she left. In order to not expose herself, Ganning put the car into her telepathic eye space when she had almost entered the area with surveillance cameras. After that, she walked to the roadside and took a taxi to the hospital where Tang Bingson stayed. It was nearly 12 a.m. when she arrived. Tang Bingson was seriously injured this time so he had to stay in the hospital for a long time. Luckily, his life wasn't in danger and he stayed clear-minded. Ji Jing, unfortunately was quite exhausted these days, because she had to take care of Tang Bingson and Tang Yaxin at the same time. Tang Bingson had his secretary and two mercenaries to protect him, so Ji Jing would go back to Tang Yaxin's side at night. Tang Yaxin was still unconscious from a serious illness. Although her life was out of danger before, it was still possible that she wouldn't survive this time. Ji Jing almost had a breakdown when both her daughter and husband were in trouble. She was worried about their family's business if both of them couldn't become healthy again. Even though she had a small business, she was unable to run a business group like the Tang organization. She honestly didn't know what she could do if Tang Bingson had to stay in the bed all the time. If Tang Bingson couldn't get back to his feet. She was definitely no match for those experienced directors in the Tang organization. The life she wanted was having a lot of money without working at all. She wanted to go wherever she wanted to have fun. She honestly had no interest in running a company. Even the small business owned by her was managed by other people. She didn't need to spend much effort on it. The Tang organization, however, was different. It was too large and its owner must be very careful not to make any mistakes which was quite stressful once she thought about that. Tang Bingson stayed in a VIP ward, which wasn't in the same building as other common wards. Gunning went to the VIP inpatient department building, but she didn't rush to go inside. Instead, she used her jade eyes to see ward 505 on the fifth floor. She wasn't doing it to make sure whether Tang Bingson was in it, instead she did it to see the situation in order to be prepared. In Tang Bingson's ward, he was lying in the patient bed, while his secretary was sitting aside with a laptop. They were talking about business. It was very late, but Tang Bingson was still busy dealing with his work, which showed his great desire to control his power. Although the Tang organization was owned by him and he had the absolute power to make all the decisions, the situation was different now. He was sick and it was also hard for him to deal with his work now, actually. He could leave his work to those who he trusted. There were some people who had Tang Bingson's trust, but he was simply unwilling to leave his work to other people. Many people had different purposes in the Tang organization, but they all relied on it to gain benefits, so the company's future was their first priority. Anyway, Tang Bingson still insisted on doing the work on his own. In the living room in the ward. There were two mercenaries who stayed by Tang Bingson's side at all times in case Tang Aining suddenly showed up to attack him. Although Tang Aining had been absent for days, Tang Bingson couldn't relax at all. Maybe Tang Aining was secretly spying on him. Once he was left alone, she would appear. His secretary and security guards slept on the sofa in the living room, but basically only his secretary could have regular sleep. The security guards, however, couldn't sleep often because they were worried that Tang Aining might come once they closed their eyes. Actually, they had never doubted their abilities before they encountered Tang Aining. Even if they were asleep, they were confident that they could sense any sounds and movements. Nevertheless, after knowing what had happened to their mates and how Tang Aining was able to intrude without anyone knowing, they didn't dare to relax. If they had to have some sleep, one of them had to stay awake while the other went to have a little sleep. In fact, all the above weren't problems in Gunning's eyes. Even though there were other people in Tang Bingson's ward, no one could stop her from taking action. Gunning withdrew her sight, and went upstairs. This was the VIP inpatient department, but there weren't strict rules about who could enter. It was only forbidden to tell the number of wards of the patients. If the patient's relatives or friends wanted to visit him or her, they could directly give him or her a call for the number of the ward. Therefore, most visitors who didn't know the number of wards were unkind. Even if they were friendly visitors, the hospital would still choose to take the responsibility and keep it secret. Anyway, Gunning went straight to the outside of Tang Bingson's ward without encountering any difficulties. Because it was very late, there weren't many passers-by, Chapter 1747, 
be in despair, because there was nobody in the ward on the right side next to Tang Bingson's ward, Gunning walked into it and used her jade eyes to see the inside of Tang Bingson's ward. At this time, his secretary was already out to continue to deal with the files sitting on the sofa. He couldn't fall asleep in the hospital anyway, so he chose to work. Tang Bingson couldn't work all night, so he closed his eyes to have a rest, but he couldn't sleep. He was full of worries so it was impossible for him to have a good sleep now. Tang Ening caused all of his worries and he was always afraid that she might appear out of blue and kill him. Even though there were two mercenaries standing outside and all the windows were closed in his room, Tang Aining was too unbelievable and mysterious. He couldn't stop being worried. It was quite uncomfortable when he couldn't fall asleep, but he was scared to fall asleep, so he refused to take sleeping pills. He only dared to close his eyes to have a quiet rest for a while, and he normally slept during the day. Because there were many people walking around in the hospital during the day, he thought that Tang Aining wouldn't show up and he could have a relaxed sleep for a while. When Gunning looked at Tang Bingson's ward from the next ward, she saw two mercenaries and his secretary sitting on the sofa in the living room. If Gunning wanted to get rid of them and attack Tang Bingson, she could only freeze them with her cold magical power. If she directly intruded into it, it would make loud noises and she wouldn't be able to achieve her goal. She couldn't get dizzying smoke right now. If she had it, there would be no need for her to waste her magical power. After all, it cost a lot of magical power to freeze three adults and it would affect her strength. Anyway, since she was going to get rid of them, she had to pay for it. No pain, no gain. After that, with the wall in the middle, Gunning fixed her eyes on the three men in the living room, then released her cold magical power. When the three men felt themselves being attacked by the cold magical power, their bodies stiffened. The coldness quickly spread around their bodies and even their bones were frozen. It happened too fast and they didn't even know what had really happened. It's strange. Why do I suddenly feel so cold in summer? The secretary asked in surprise. He was an ordinary man, so he was affected faster. No idea. The two mercenaries exchanged a glance with confusion. Neither of them could figure out what was going on here. However, they felt danger from their back, but they could only see a wall when they turned around. They couldn't believe that the danger was in the next room, because it was impossible for anyone to threaten them with the wall in the middle, at least according to their knowledge. If so, why did they feel the danger? Before long, the secretary was completely frozen and couldn't move at all. He was scared in an instant, and tried to say something to the mercenaries in vain. At the same time, the two mercenaries' limbs also became stiff. They wanted to walk out to check the situation, but unfortunately they couldn't move. They opened their mouths, trying to say something, but failed again, which frightened them. They didn't know what had happened to them nor how to handle it. They had never seen such a strange thing before. It only took a minute for Gunning to freeze the three of them from beginning to end, but it cost her a lot of magical power and she became a little weak. Her face also turned pale, so Gunning needed to rest for a while. After a minute, Gunning felt much better and walked to Tang Bingson's ward. She wasn't afraid that they could recover because it was impossible for them to recover once they were frozen by Gunning. They needed at least half a year of treatment, or power crystals to help them recover. A single crystal could help them feel better, but they needed three crystals in order to make a full recovery, because they had serious frostbite. If they weren't treated within ten minutes, their blood vessels would burst and they would die, because after the limbs were frozen, the blood vessels would also be frozen and blood would be unable to flow. Gunning had no intention to kill them, so she wouldn't let them die after their blood vessels burst. She would tie them up later and help them take a power crystal to alleviate the suffering. They wouldn't die, or be disabled, but it left a serious after effect on their bodies and their movement would be limited. Gunning didn't think they were innocent, although they had no grudge against each other. They weren't good people anyway so they deserved the punishment. Gunning used her jade eyes to see whether there were other people outside the door. When she made sure there was no one else, she went outside. Before she walked out, she had everything she needed in hands, like ropes and tape. Tang Bingson's ward wasn't locked, 
So Ganning easily got into it, even though they couldn't move or speak, they could hear and they were scared when the door was pushed open. The first idea that appeared in their mind was that Tang Aining was coming, if the person was really Tang Aining, it would be terrible. They hoped that the person could be a nurse or a doctor, because they would be rescued in that case. Unfortunately, they were disappointed. They heard that someone locked the door in the room, which meant it was an unwanted visitor. The next second, the person came in front of them, it wasn't a nurse or a doctor, but Tang Aining, the last person they wanted to see now. Since Tang Aining showed up, they believed that it must be her who caused them to be frozen. It was too strange to be accepted, and they couldn't figure out how she managed to do it. No matter how they tried to understand it, they failed to get the answer. Ganning didn't bother to waste more time on them. She directly tied them up together and put a power crystal into their mouths before she sealed their mouths with tape. When Ganning squeezed a power crystal into their mouths, they all believed it was poison and were in despair. However, before long, they felt a flow of coolness in their bodies, and their frozen limbs started to feel better which confused them again. They didn't understand what Tang Aining was doing. Even though they knew Tang Bingson was the only target of Tang Aining, they still couldn't understand why she froze them and made them unable to say anything, then helped them alleviate the situation. It was hard for them to believe it, because it was too strange, but there was no one else here and she was the only intruder. Anyway, although they felt better now, they still couldn't move, not only because they were tied up, but also because they only felt slightly more comfortable than before. It still wasn't easy for them to move right now. Chapter 1748, Force Tang Bingson to Step Down After Gunning dealt with them, she walked to Tang Bingson's ward. In case he made any sounds, she slightly froze his limbs through the door with her magical power beforehand. Tang Bingson suddenly felt attacked by the cold. He was surprised but didn't take it seriously. He only thought that the temperature went down as the night became darker, so he just pulled the quill tight around his body. However, he felt his hands become stiff and weak, which made him attach importance to his condition. Because Tang Bingson was a patient and wasn't in good health now, he was especially worried that his body would get worse and worse. He wanted to call his secretary who was outside but he found it very hard to open his mouth or make any sounds. His voice was so low that even he could barely hear it. After that, Tang Bingson wanted to ring the bell, but failed to raise his hand, which scared him. He was afraid that he might die like that, in silence. The next second, Tang Bingson heard the sound of the door opening. He thought that his secretary was coming inside, and felt relieved. However, when Gunning entered his sight, he was shocked and frightened. Tang Aining, how did she get in here? Where are the other people? Why didn't I hear anything just then? He knew that Tang Aining had unbelievable abilities, but what she had done this time strengthened his opinion about her. Seeing Tang Bingson so terrified, Gunning put on an evil smile with satisfaction and joked, Been a while, I thought you might have forgotten me but it seems that you haven't from your reaction. It was impossible for Tang Bingson to forget her. On the contrary, he was on alert for her all day and all night. The last thing he wanted now was for her to suddenly show up and hurt him. Unfortunately, no matter how he tried to stop her, he failed. What do you want? Tang Bingson clenched his teeth. Because he wasn't seriously frozen, he was able to speak but with difficulty and his voice was very low. Gunning smiled and said at ease, I don't think you can manage the Tang organization well right now. Why don't you let someone else do it for you? You. Tang Bingson became emotional once he heard that. Impossible. Tang Bingson thought that Tang Aining wanted to replace him. Impossible? I don't think it's up to you, said Gunning with mockery. If you agree and sign this contract obediently. I can let you survive and live a good life till you are old. If not, I'll directly kill you. Anyway, I've killed countless people before. It's super easy for me to kill another one. If you're dead, you lose the Tang organization as well, and I have plenty of ways to get it. You. Tang Bingson changed his expression in fear. He believed that Tang Aining could do it, because he couldn't be clearer about her previous job. He was unwilling to die but he was reluctant to give her the company. However, he had to make a choice right now, and he chose to live. As long as he could survive, he might still have the chance to get the Tang organization back. However, if he was dead, he would have nothing. Nevertheless, 
it wasn't an easy decision, and Tang Bingson hesitated to say yes. The Tang organization was as important as half of his life. What? Are you doubting my ability? I have a lot of evidence of the crimes you've committed. If I send it to the related departments in the government, the Tang organization might not be able to survive. Although the Tang family has great influence in the capital, there are many more powerful families. I don't take action without good preparation, so I can be honest with you. I actually have much more powerful support than the Tang family behind my back, said Ganing. Tang Bingson didn't doubt it, because Tang Aining wasn't an ordinary person, it was very normal that she had powerful support and connections. Oh, by the way, do you know why the Tanying gang encountered some trouble, then soon went back to normal? Do you know why Huang Hei Hao safely came back after being abducted by me? He didn't rescue himself, I let him go. When you refused to help him out with 5 billion yuan, you lost his loyalty. After all, he has made far more than 5 billion yuan for you, but you gave him up at a key moment. He was persuaded to work for me afterwards, so the Tanying gang listens to me now, said Ganing. When Ganing talked about that, she remembered that she had something that she hadn't given Leng Shouting yet in her telepathic eye space. She should have a conversation with him when she went back to Mountain River Garden later. What? Tang Bingson rounded his eyes in shock. He couldn't believe that Huang Hei Hao had already betrayed him. Tang Bingson also knew that it was unacceptable that he had refused to save Huang Hei Hao with 5 billion yuan. As Tang Aining said, Huang Hei Hao had made far more than 5 billion yuan for him but he was unwilling to pay that amount of money for Huang Hei Hao. However, he had chosen to do that in order to let Tang Aining know that he didn't care about Huang Hei Hao. In that case, Huang Hei Hao would be useless in the hands of Tang Aining so that she might let him go. Unexpectedly, Huang Hei Hao betrayed him. Even though it was his fault, he was still mad at Huang Hei Hao's betrayal. In his eyes, Huang Hei Hao was his subordinate and shouldn't betray him no matter what happened. After all, he actually had the intention to rescue him. Have you made up your mind? I don't have time to waste on you. You can have only one minute to tell me your decision, or you can't blame me for being ruthless, said Ganing. Afterwards, she took out her phone and set a timer for one minute. Tang Bingson was full of anger and was very unwilling to yield, but he was cornered now. In fact, he already had the answer in his heart but it was difficult for him to say a word now. When there were only 10 seconds left, Gunning counted backwards. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. As Gunning did that, it felt like she was calling him to death. The second she said 3, Tang Bingson made up his mind and said, fine, I agree. He didn't dare to risk his life, and was afraid that his life might be ended once the countdown was over. Very good. Gunning smiled with satisfaction, then took out a power crystal and helped Tang Bingson swallow it. Tang Bingson had the same thought that it might be poison as the three people outside at the beginning, so he wanted to struggle, but failed. He could only watch as the pill was squeezed into his mouth and melted in an instant. What is it? Tang Bingson asked in anger, Chapter 1749, Can't Live Long. The medicine that can help your limbs recover. You need to sign your name said Ganing. Hearing that, Tang Bingson felt relieved. He believed her words, because she indeed needed him to sign his name. Within half a minute, he began to feel the change of his body. His limbs weren't so stiff and he was able to move his hands now, but there was still a big difference from his previous condition. Anyway, he had no problem writing. You promise to let me go once I sign the contract, right? asked Tang Bingson. Although he knew he couldn't resist at all if Tang Aining regretted it, he still wanted to make sure that he wouldn't be hurt. He was pushing his luck. Of course, I will keep my promise, said Ganing with certainty. Actually, she had no intention to kill Tang Bingson, she simply wanted to torture him. Afterwards, Ganing took out the contract and let Tang Bingson sign his name. Tang Bingson didn't bother to read the contract and signed his name without hesitation. Anyway, he lost the company now, and it was meaningless to read the contract. When Tang Bingson signed his name, Gunning took a video of him without him knowing, in case he regretted it in the future. She had to keep the video as evidence. In fact, as long as he signed the contract on his own, it would be no use regretting it. Gunning simply kept the evidence to avoid unnecessary trouble. After he signed the contract in duplicate, 
Gunning took it with satisfaction, then left. Tang Bingson could only watch Gunning's leaving back. He was angry and unwilling to accept the result, but he could do nothing about it. Gunning didn't want his property, she just wanted his shares of the Tang organization, so he wasn't penniless. When Gunning went back to the living room, she untied Tang Bingson's secretary and security guards. Although they were free now, their bodies were very weak and couldn't fight against Gunning. Therefore, they did nothing and watched her walking away. Once she was gone, they walked into the ward to check Tang Bingson's condition. They were relieved after they found that Tang Bingson was fine. Because they heard Gunning's conversation with Tang Bingson from outside, they knew what had happened, and were just worried that he might be hurt. Since he wasn't injured, they asked nothing. The two mercenaries were hired by Tang Bingson. If Tang Bingson were still killed under their protection, their reputation would be ruined and it would affect their career. As for the secretary, he was absent today, so he would be affected too if Tang Bingson was hurt. Right at this moment, Tang Bingson abruptly spat out a mouthful of blood before he passed out. His secretary rang the bell at once to call the doctor. Dot. Gunning sent Tang Kinyang a message after she left the hospital. She told him that she succeeded and would give him the contract tomorrow. She knew that Tang Kinyan couldn't sleep after he learned that she went to meet Tang Bingson, because it had a greater effect on him than it did on her. Tang Kinyan stayed awake the entire time, waiting for Gunning's message. As time went by, he became more and more anxious. It wasn't because he didn't believe in Gunning. He believed that she would be successful once she took action but he couldn't sleep until he heard the result. When he saw Gunning's message, Tang Kinyan almost jumped up in excitement. She succeeded. They really succeeded. There were no accidents, just countless surprises. He was fated to stay awake during this night, and couldn't fall asleep because he was too excited. What made him most excited wasn't this windfall, but the result Tang Bingson had. Tang Bingson might have a breakdown after losing the Tang organization which was what Tang Kinyan looked forward to seeing. He wouldn't mind if he couldn't see it, it was enough that he knew that Tang Bingson was having a hard time. All of a sudden, Tang Kinyan's excitement was replaced by upset. He got up from the bed and went to the study, then he took out an album from the drawer and opened it. The first photo was a family photo of three, but only he was alive now. Dad, although I didn't take revenge with my own hands, Someone did it for me. I'll soon take over Tang Bingson's company, and he's having a very hard time now. I can't kill him, but I don't think he can live long. Dot. When Gunning was back in Mountain River Garden, it was nearly 1 a.m. She got home so quickly because it was very late and there was a little traffic on the road. Normally, she had to spend 40 minutes on the road, but she came back in 20 minutes tonight. She didn't want to keep Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Ya waiting for her. So she sped up along the way. At this time, Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Yao were still awake. Because they were cultivators, they wouldn't feel tired even if they didn't have sleep for days. Sometimes, cultivators spent months on cultivation and only slept for a few days. They would feel more energetic when the energy moved around in their bodies, and would only feel tired when the cultivation was over. Although Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Yao were waiting for Gunning to come back, they didn't sit there and do nothing. Instead, they were practicing kung fu skills in the backyard. It was very late, but they were in a big house. There were many green plants between houses, so nobody would hear them. When Gunning's car just drove into the front yard of their house, Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Yao felt it. They stopped at once and went back to the living room. Gunning parked the car and walked to the door but the door opened before she touched it and Leng Shouting showed his face. Gunning felt guilty when she saw that Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Yao were still waiting for her. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I was busy doing something else. Gunning apologized. Even though she knew that Jing Yun Yao wouldn't be annoyed, she should show her attitude and couldn't forget her manners. Actually, she apologized not to show her manners, but because she really felt guilty. It's fine said Jing Yun Yao. She didn't want Gunning to feel guilty, so she explained. We're cultivators, so we will be fine even if we don't sleep for half a month. In addition, we didn't sit there and do nothing. We were actually practicing kung fu skills in the backyard. Shouting is always busy, so we seized the night to practice. If Gunning was an ordinary, weak girl, Jing Yun Yao might be worried about her safety, but Gunning wasn't. Moreover, 
What Gunning did was very important. There were some things better done at night. Chapter 1750. Give the flood dragon to Leng Shouting. When Leng Shouting heard the call with Gunning, Jing Yun Yao heard their conversation. It was indeed better to deal with monsters and ghosts at night. There were people around in the day after all, and it might cause trouble. As for Tang Bingsen, she had heard a little about their grudge, so she understood Gunning's behavior. How is it? asked Leng Shouting with concern although he knew that Gunning never failed. It's done. I threatened Tang Bingsen into signing the shares transfer contract and they're under Tang Kinyan's name now. The Tang organization is no longer controlled by Tang Bingsen, and he'll have a breakdown afterwards. Given his condition, he can't live long even though I am allowing him to live. Many innocent people have been killed because of her, and he should pay for it. He didn't even hesitate to kill his own daughter and brother, so he must be seriously punished. If Tang Kinyan and I didn't have the ability to take revenge, our relatives would have died for nothing, said Gunning. She didn't bother to avoid Jing Yun Yao, because Jing Yun Yao was already aware of it. Knowing that Tang Bingsen didn't hesitate to kill his own daughter and brother, Jing Yun Yao had mixed emotions, because she had been betrayed and chased by her close family member as well. She also wanted to take revenge in order to comfort Leng Yu and Hun who had left this world. If there is any problem in the following days and it's not convenient for you to handle it, feel free to tell me and I can make the Tang organization stand out, said Leng Shouting. Sure. Gunning agreed. If she really needed Leng Shouting's help, she wouldn't hesitate to let him know. Oh, there is something I need to tell you, said Gunning to Leng Shouting with a serious expression. What is it? asked Leng Shouting. Well, I should go back to my room now. I'll give you two some space. Jing Yun Yao was afraid that she might hinder their conversation. Please stay. I need you to be present when we talk about it. Gunning stopped her at once. If so, Jing Yun Yao didn't leave. Well, the thing is that Shouting's level is still low now. He's no match for cultivators at a high level, and he might be in danger in the future, so I decided to give the Flood Dragon to Shouting. It can help him if he encounters danger, said Gunning. What? Hearing that, both Leng Shouting and Jing Yun Yao were shocked, but for different reasons. Leng Shouting was aware of the Flood Dragon, so he was shocked because Gunning was going to give such an important creature to him. Jing Yun Yao, however, didn't know that Gunning had a Flood Dragon by her side, and was amazed by that. No, if you give the Flood Dragon to me, how about you? I think it should stay with you to keep you safe. Leng Shouting refused right away. It wasn't because he didn't want to accept Gunning's kindness, but because it was too much. He was worried that Gunning might be injured if the Flood Dragon wasn't by her side. We're in different situations. I'm a mortal, and I won't encounter greater danger than you do. You're facing danger from the Jing family and strong monsters as well as ghosts. The essence of cultivators is very nutritious for them. It can help them greatly improve their cultivation. If you encounter them, there will certainly be a battle. What if you fail? We don't want that to happen said Gunning. Compared with Gunning, Leng Shouting was indeed in a more dangerous situation. Well, Leng Shouting knew it very well, but he still didn't think it was a good idea, and he was also worried about Gunning's safety. Even if I encounter monsters or ghosts in the future, I can deal with them. Gunning interrupted Leng Shouting. When Gunning said that, Leng Shouting understood what she was talking about. She had the telepathic eye space which could keep her enemies inside and protect her from danger. Gunning's enemies were mainly monsters and ghosts, because other ordinary people weren't so strong. Leng Shouting wasn't worried that Gunning might fail in a fight against mortals. Therefore, Leng Shouting became silent. Gunning was determined to give the Flood Dragon to him, so he knew that it was useless no matter how he refused, even if they had an argument. Gunning was never afraid of arguing with him. But he didn't want to do that. He was always obedient when he faced Gunning, and he enjoyed it. Gunning didn't say that she had the telepathic eye space, so Jing Yun Yao wasn't aware of it, but she didn't bother to think much about it. Anyway, Gunning could protect herself well. Gunning continued, Moreover, a monster fox has surrendered to me. I'll train it to be my helper. You can do your cultivation with the flood dragon from now on. It'll greatly help the flood dragon improve as well. Fine. I accept. Because of Gunning's determination, Leng Shouting agreed in the end, and felt quite touched. Seeing that Leng Shouting agreed, 
Gunning smiled and let the flood dragon out of the telepathic eye space. In an instant, its giant body appeared in everyone's sight. Jing Yan Ya was amazed, but it wasn't because of the existence of the flood dragon, instead it was because she didn't know where it came from. She thought that Gunning might have a Kian Kun bag too. Although she was curious, she knew that she shouldn't ask about that right now. When the flood dragon saw Jing Yan Yao, it subconsciously stepped backwards. Because it was at a lower level than Jing Yan Yao, it was afraid of her. If the flood dragon had a fight against Jing Yan Yao, it might lose, but it could do a lot more damage than her. It could ruin a whole building by sweeping its tail. Both of them had their own advantage. Flood dragon, this is my fiancé's mother. We're in the same group, said Gunning. Hearing that, the flood dragon was relieved and greeted her, nice to see you. Jing Yan Yao, who was at a high level, could understand the flood dragon's language, so she replied, nice to see you too. Leng Shouting, however, needed to go up another level to understand the languages of monsters and ghosts. Shouting, put the flood dragon into your Kian Kun bag for now, said Gunning. Sure, said Leng Shouting and took out his Kian Kun bag, the next second, the flood dragon disappeared in the air and went into his Kian Kun bag. Leng Shouting's Kian Kun bag wasn't as useful as Gunning's telepathic high space. If he wanted to take anything out of it, he had to open it, while Gunning could simply use her mind as if she could do magic. After that, Jing Yan Yao asked, Ning Ning, where did you get the flood dragon? I went to deal with something in HK last year. Several friends of mine told me that there were treasures under the ocean so I dived to search for them, then I met the flood dragon and kept it as my helper, said Gunning.